I'm Cheryl Hancock, and I will call the August 7th, 2019 school board meeting to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And then, Mrs. Jagosinski, if you would do the roll call, please. Yes. Good. So, sorry. Gary Dunlap. He is not here. I we thought he might be here, so he may still be coming. Here. Tom Cruise. Here. Barb Wettstein. Here. Rebecca Reber. I think she is en route. And myself, I am here. So with four of the six school board members present, I would declare that we have a quorum. I would um, note that the agenda has been published and distributed and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda at this time? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So, moved. so, moved. Right. Second. so a motion and a second. There you go. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. I did not receive any cards for public participation. So then we will move on to board applicant interviews. And let me just maybe for the whole group describe how this will um, occur this evening. So as you know, we have a vacancy due to the resignation of Kate Mayer, who moved out of the district. And we will begin the process. Everyone has completed their application materials, and the board has had an opportunity to see those. And thank you very much. I found them to be very thoughtful and, and complete. And so it was nice to get that. It's, we are blessed to have people that are interested to serve on the board. So thank you for coming forward and doing that. The next process then is this evening. And so we will begin with with um, interview questions and I will moderate that. I have a list of 10 to 12 questions that we have used in the past and are basic, um, very common questions to be used in like candidate forums and those sorts of things. After that, if any of the board members would like to ask you questions beyond that, they will have the opportunity to do that. We would ask that you keep your comments brief, not, um, we're not doing the timing thing like we do for candidate forums, but usually a minute to a minute and a half is, is really sufficient to meet the needs. If there's some times that you go a little longer, um, we won't inter interrupt, but if you consistently go long, we may ask you to you know, shorten your answers and that sort of thing um, for time. Then after that, the board will have the opportunity to discuss and or vote. And according to our policies, um, it is a signed vote. We will s make our vote, send them into the uh, clerk, and she and probably the district administrator, since our our secretary is in the other room. We'll count the ballots and just and then out loud um, announce the results. We do need a majority um, in order to select a new board member. So with four of us here, we would need three. If we have another person come, um, we still it would still be three um, people that we would need in order to have appoint another candidate. And we continue to vote until we get all night. Um, all night until we get a selected candidate so um and so that is basically how it will happen if you are the successful candidate then you have a few days to make a decision if this is really what you want and going through this process we're hoping that you do but then next monday night is our next school board meeting and we would hope that you would come to that be sworn in and then be able to serve in your first meeting um, at that meeting and I won't be here so I um, apologize for not being able to attend but I'll be out of um, the state at that time so but it you know whoever it is we really congratulate you and then if you aren't selected you know it just is important that people become in, involved in the district and so we would hope that you would find maybe a committee or something to serve on um, in order to get a better background 
You will serve until the next spring election, whoever is the successful candidate. And in December, you would have to make the decision whether you wanted to run for re-election, even though um, your term isn't up until April. So at that time, then you would fill Kate's um, seat until, I, I think she has one more year. I don't know if she's up, if this is her last year. So anyway, then there would be an election. And we, this is one more in addition to this right. one. Right. So, so yeah, so even though she has that other one, you wouldn't serve for two years or a year and a half. You would just serve until the next spring election. And then whoever is elected um, to that seat would then um, be done in another year. I guess it would be just another year. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I thought it went the three years then. Okay. Yeah, Good no, because we try to keep it the three, two, and two always oh. to have it spread out so that... We don't have four one year and then we lose half our board. We lose oh, a majority of the board, okay. so. Okay, so are there any questions from the candidates? I, I know it is being videotaped. We do uh, uh, put this out on YouTube and so um, that is where Stacy is now, just so you're aware that it is. But I know with not, well, I think you have the mic, so that's why we ask you to use the mics in part, not because of the big audience, but because for the YouTube and how they videotape it, it picks it up much better that way. So, so no questions then? Well, thank you very much. I think we're ready to begin then. Okay, so if you would, oh, did you select the order of? Oh, no. You, oh. Sorry. <laughs> so the first round, we're going to select the order of the response. And you won't have to, so let's say Brian is first. Then the next time Chris would, Chris, is it Christopher or Chris? I prefer Chris. Chris. So then Chris would go next, and then Stanley would go next, and so we kind of. So the first one is Chris, and then Brian. Oh boy, and then Stanley. So keep me in order if if I mess it up. So, so we'll start with Chris, and the same question for all three candidates, um, and we will do that through these questions. So if you wouldn't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on the Holman School Board. Uh, my name is Chris Lau. Um, uh, my wife and I have lived in Holman for 10 years. I have uh, two daughters that are in Viking Elementary. They are eight and six, so going into third grade and going into first grade. Um, I am pursuing this opportunity to be on the school board to, to give back to the community. Um, I want to be an advocate for public schools, for students in public schools, and the teachers and staff in the public schools. And um, I just feel that being an uh, advocate for them makes me an advocate for our community. So that's that in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. And then Brian? My name is Brian Wolpat. Is this going through? It is not. It's Cheryl. It's actually Chris Stanley and then Brian. No, it's no. Chris because I went back and forth. Okay. Hello. <laughs> okay. So my name is Brian Wolpat, and my wife and I have lived in the district for nine years. Um, she has been employed for the past 14 years in the district. I currently work in Onalaska um, as the French teacher at the high school. Um, however, I did start my career here in the district, and I put in 11 years at the high school. Um, we have two children, Avery, who is going into fourth grade at Evergreen Elementary, and Evan, who is going into first grade at Evergreen as well. Um, the purpose for me running to the board is I, I have these true convictions of the concept of your, your mission statement, where it's every student achieving global success. And, and the concept of globalism is important to me because I, I, I teach French. I mean, that's what I do for a living. Um, and so I, I want to be there to be an advocate, bring to the board that piece of the puzzle um, and to making sure that, that as we move forward in the future that we're looking through things from that lens of how do we ensure that our graduates, every single one of them when they leave the district, are prepared to achieve, because that's a big word, global success, that no matter where they go, that they are prepared to enter the workforce, to go into post-secondary education, or to go into the military. Okay, thank you. And then Stanley. Testing. Good evening. Uh, Stan Grant, uh, me and my wife have lived in the district since 2014. We have four children, 
this year we'll have a junior and a seventh grader in the district and then we'll have two young ones starting in the elementary in the next three years um, I've been a, a resident or within the community almost nearly my whole life I'm a 2001 home and high school graduate the reasons um, I'd like to serve on this board I, I think I can give a unique perspective based off growing up in this community and my military service I have a strong sense of selfless service that over my years in the military has turned into servant leadership I I've truly um, you know really tested myself and really put others in front of me to help them with their needs to you know achieve to achieve the things that they're you know the things that we're trying to do you know as a group and as a community um, and just to be part of a great team if you look around what's going on at Holman right now we have whole backfields in dirt we have all kinds of things happening here and that's all because partially for, because of the school board and to be on that team to be able to add my perspective to that I think would be a great opportunity uh, last July was I was able to achieve or uh, to get the friends of education award and you know days after that it just really made me realize you know as a servant leader in my daily job what I could provide to the community and the district of home and if I was able to serve as a member of the board Thank you. And then Brian, we'll start with you on this question. Describe your understanding of the school board's role and the administrator's role within the district. From my perspective, I, I, I truly believe that the school board kind of provides oversight for the administrators. To run a school district is a huge job. And, and I just don't believe that it can be done by the elected officials of the school board themselves. That's why you hire administrators to run the buildings and to run the districts themselves. And you put a lot of trust into them to make sure that they make the right decisions. Um, and that when they come to you with recommendations, your job is just to provide that oversight to make sure that you are being the best servant of the taxpayers to make sure that what they're bringing to you is sound, is best practice, has been researched, and is best for not only the students but the residents within the community that pay taxes thank you and then Stanley I believe um, as far as the school board and the district administrator we, we have to work together we have to be able to work together and have similar viewpoints and in common goals but we all we also need to remember the vision what are we trying to achieve and we always got to keep that in the forefront of our minds so we can continue to to push forward and, and be always progressive in everything we're doing to provide the students of the district the best possible education that we can give them thank you and then chris um, i believe the role of the school board is to establish the rules and the policies for governance of the school district um, the administrator the district administrator is there to provide a um, educational expertise and knowledge of the daily goings-on essentially serve as the as the CEO of the district under the under, with the leadership of the board so um, the district administrator is there to provide the the, the daily hands-on aspect of the, the the school district and then the board is there to to provide that guidance and, and oversight for the administration administrator and the administ and the school board or the excuse me the district itself thank you and then Stanley we'll start with you on this one what do you see as the current strengths of the district that the board should work to maintain going forward the current strengths of the district I believe are the updated and technology updated uh, learning spaces within the schools and I think we continue to need to we need to continue to, to push for more and more referendums to become you know better and and the leading the leading district within our area and with our peer schools um, and I think we're doing a great job of that right now and as long as we can keep that momentum up I think our vision is being met and I it's I, and I think it's just very important that we keep in mind the changing technology and the world that changes around us daily and I think we're doing a great job of that right now okay thank you Chris I feel that the school district has done a very good job of attracting and retaining uh, high quality educators and staff. Um, my experience with that have, has been limited to just the, the elementary school and the 4K program, but the teachers that we've had 
um, experience with have all been great. Um, I've heard through other friends who are teachers that have said, you know, the Holman School District is one of the top districts in the, in the state and the area. It was definitely one of the reasons that my wife and I chose to, to move up here when we were starting our family is because of the strength of the school district. So I really think that the district has done a, a great job of, of attracting talent to the district to teach our kids. So that's a, a, real, a real strength for the district. Thank you. And then Brian. I, I would go there. I think there's three things that the district has done incredibly well. The first is you guys have mm. phenomenal facilities in the district. When you look at all the buildings, they are really top notch. They're very well kept. Secondly, that you guys have incredible educators and administrators in the district. Um, Chris is right in saying that it attracts great candidates when, it, when positions come open and that there are individuals that want to teach in this district, specifically in this district, in the area. Um, and then thirdly, I think the board does a great job at, with a vision of looking ahead, knowing that this is a growing community, that student population is going to continuously grow, and that with that growth comes added programs and added teachers, and that you're always thinking that next step forward of what do we have to do eventually to go to the public to ask for a referendum for dollars to make sure that we can sustain what we are pr currently providing students. Thank you. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a question and answer unless we asked you for improvements and, and that sort of thing. So, Chris, we'll start with you. Are there specific improvements or changes that you would like to see the board um, or the district administrator make or consider? Like I said earlier, my experience, I guess, with the, the district as a whole has been kind of limited to the to the th four plus years, I guess, that we've, we've had kids in the district. But um, I guess just to, to make it, we're a very kind of... Caucasian district and I, I think it's important that we have um, varying perspectives for kids because uh, when they get out in the real world they're not going to everything's not going to be as the same as it is in Holman there's going to be other people of different cultures and beliefs and values that their people our students are going to have to interact with so I think it's important that they at least get some experience with that going um, out of our district into the into the I hate to use the word real world but um, into the into the becoming adults, so I think it's important that we embrace some of the di diversity that they don't organically have within the district by just making that available and known to them. Okay, thank you. Um, Brian? Uh, I would echo that in the concept of global education. I, I think when, we are, when we're looking at how do we set up our students for this success, we have to expose them to multiple cultures, um, multiple ways of thinking. The, the concept of intercultural competencies come to play and knowing that the entire world doesn't speak English, that we have to prepare them to be able to communicate with, with other people. Um, those are huge tasks, and I think the district could do a better job at starting world language education at a younger age. Thank you, and then Stanley. I would say, um, just stay up, stay in front of the population growth. I think we can research data and trends at, to be able to properly prioritize facilities. I, th I think we can, I think co-curricular activities, facilities for that um, could be taken a look at and, and even better. I think we're, we're, we're doing a very good job and we're right at the cusp, but I do believe with a, a few more years, maybe a few more referendums, I think we can be the leading edge on the, in the western side of the state as far as being ahead of the population growth, as far as facilities, as far as is everything that's gonna, gonna help not only our students achieve global success, but also our athletes and our co-curricular activities achieve the same level of success. Thank you. And Brian, we'll start with you on this one. What background do you have that will assist you specifically with school finance, understanding it, and working through a budgeting process? Not much. <laughs> um, but I, I have a family that has a budget, and I understand that at the end of the month that if we spend more than we take in, that the next month we're going to have to tighten our belt a little bit. Um, that it is always saving for the future incidentals. Um, and so all I can offer is, is what I know personally as, as a family man. Um, otherwise, I'm willing to learn. Okay, thank you. And then Stanley? I, I would echo what Brian said as far as a family budget, but during my Monday through Friday job, I also 
I'm one of I'm, I'm one of four that really executes the checkbook for our marketing and advertising um, budget as far as are we spending the money correctly is the money being spent fiscally and that's in the tens of thousands of dollars and that sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars so I understand fiscal responsibility I understand um, balancing a budget and I also understand is, is it a need or is it a want thank you and then Chris I guess um, I do have some formal education in this. My undergrad it was in uh, public administration, so I'm familiar with some of the, the nuances of the, the public budgeting and finance aspect. Um, in my job, I deal a lot with projects and um, staying on scope and in budget to make sure that we are meeting the goals and you know not spending a ton of money that we don't have. Um, and it's a little different, obviously, in the in the corporate world where it's it, you can spend a little bit more. But um, I, I know in the school district we're dealing with with two things that people are very passionate about. They're passionate about their money and they're passionate about their kids. So we have to have a balance with that. And 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 I I know with the referendums we've had that the community has been very supportive of those the the, the board and the in the district spending that money. And um, I just think it's it's good. But yeah, I guess to, to answer my question, uh, my formal education has been in, in the public administration field, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Okay, thank you. So keeping on the finance front, with limited resources, how should the school district prioritize the balance among core, academic instruction, the arts, and co-curricular? And we'll start with Stanley on this. I think that needs to be balanced based off the vision of the school district. Um, it, and I understand where there may be some arguments because art may want more than some academics and things like that, but we have to, what is going to set our students up for the, for the most likelihood that they will leave this high school and achieve global success? That's what I think we always need to keep in the forefront of our mind when it comes to financial responsibility. Thank you. Then Chris? I guess I would echo that. That's a that's a very good point. Um, I, in terms of balance, um, I would say that we. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have a I don't have a a, a very great answer for this. Um, just I guess prioritize based off of, of the needs of the that the of the, the district sees or the the enrollment sees in the different activities. Um, but I, I understand that the. the the importance of the co-curriculars to developing a well-rounded individual within the district and I, I personally enjoyed those as a student growing up but I, I just understand that the importance of providing a sound education to support our students as they go out into the into the into the world so thank you and then Brian I would say nobody wants to have to make that terrible budget decision that we're gonna have to cut programs but at the end of the day we have to go to our administrators to say where where are there areas that that you can tighten that that you know yourselves you know we could do without in the future just because we just don't have the funds to support that and and when that is done you do have to look then at the programming to say all right we have to offer specific courses to these students in order for them to graduate what do we do after that and and uh, sadly the reality is with co-curriculars that a lot of that falls onto fundraising those groups have to fundraise and and that's the current reality and it, you know, with budget cuts, then it just comes down to groups having to do that more. Okay, thank you. So then starting with Christopher, right? Chris, I'm sorry. This, this is a question about time. And let me just, so everybody understands. We hold two school board meetings every month, usually a minimum, well, 11 minutes one time, not too long ago. Um, but that was it, really rare, though. <laughs> our meetings run for, from about an hour to maybe two hours at, at most. We aren't one of those school boards that goes until midnight. But we hold two regular meetings um, every month, and then every board member is asked to serve on a board committee. And so that's an additional, so three meetings a month. And of course, there's time to prepare for each of those meetings as well. So I'm curious, given the other demands of your time how do you see yourself finding the time necessary to prepare for and attend board meetings and committee meetings and we will start with Chris on this one um, I, I would say that um, my family has been very supportive of me pursuing this opportunity so um, my wife was ecstatic when I was getting ready to go out today so she was very support she's very supportive of this um, this ad adventure I guess um, 
So I, I, I don't see a problem with uh, me attending the meetings and or board work. Um, I've been active in a lot of other volunteer organizations, and we have regular meetings on that occur on that, and I've had no problems making those as well. So I foresee no issues with my work schedule or my family commitments to attending meetings or committee meetings or doing prep work for, you know, being informed of the decisions the board has to make. Okay, thank you. Then Brian. Over the past year, I've actually been a part of the Student and Learning Committee. Um, and so the family already made the adjustments and already foreseen the future of, of doing it again this year. So that's not an issue. Um, in another life, I actually recorded video, t or I, I recorded meetings. Um, and so really the two Monday night commitment a month is, is not an issue at all. Okay, and then Stanley? Um, just through communication, my wife was real excited for me, so, you know, obviously she'll stay at home um, and, and be able to watch the children. My work, just forecasting out things that I need to do, um, which I handle on a daily basis, so I, I really don't see any issues with having to meet those meetings. Um, and, and, you know, I did take a hard look and make sure I could make, make the, meet, meet those meeting times, you know, obviously before... I would come here tonight to run for the board. Thank you. And Brian, we'll start with you on this one. As a school board member, how would you be an advocate for the district schools and students? Um, all right, I have to say this, because I work down the road, and so people make fun of me that I wear purple. <laughs> and, but, but the truth of the matter is, is that my kids wear maroon, and so do my wife. And so at the end of the day, we live in the school district of Holman. And, and it's in talking to old colleagues, it, there's still always that little bit of, you know, nostalgia of, of having worked here. And so I already am an advocate. I mean, the whole concept of me joining the Student and Learning Committee was because I wanted to make a difference because I know that what happens in this district impacts my students or my children and then impacts all the students in the district. And so that was why I joined it. That's I. I I will be a great advocate for the district. Um, and then Stan, Stanley? I would say, could you repeat the question? How, um, yes, as a school board member, how would you be an advocate for the district schools and students? I would say it, who the people who know me like truly know that I, I, I bleed maroon. Mm -hmm. the, the, the volunteer hours I've put in, not only with the football team in extra curricular activities, um, teaching leadership classes to the students over at the high school. I find a, I find a, a great um, I, I find a great you know for me it, it really makes me feel good to help these students. It, it it really makes me feel good to know that I'm surrounded with such great educators and people in this community. So. No matter where I'm at in the state or the country, I'm always talking something, relaying it back to this, this town. So I, I do believe that this town is great. I think the district is great and, and their students as well. Okay, thank you. And then Chris? I would say just speaking enthusiastically and positively about the, the education that my kids have received and, and the kids that I see are in our neighborhood and in our community that are, are going on and doing great things. Uh, actually, we were just over in Green Bay this last couple of days and I actually ran into a girl that was from the Holman School District when she checked my ID to buy the thing and I, it, was, it was impressive to see that she was out and doing such cool things. Um, working at Lambeau um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah just being a uh, uh, real positive about the 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 community and the, and the education that my kids receive and in, in, in the school district as a whole so and just being uh, I guess as pro Holman as I can be okay thank you now this is an issue that we see and hear a lot about on the state level it's related to school vouchers and I'm just curious and Stan I think we Stanley we start with you on this do you support the vouchers to be used for students choosing to attend a private religious school but they reside in the Holman School District I do support that I, I think it you know, it just comes back to, you know, personal preference in, in what people really want to do as far as, you know, what they want to practice, you know, for their religion and, and the way they want to be educated. I don't think, I, I really don't feel as if I should have a different stance against it. I kind of feel like that's something that should, they should be able to control and I would support. <laughs> okay. 
Um, Chris? I, I do not support the, the, the voucher system. I think that because it's, a, it's, a, it's a personal choice the family makes to go on and, and, and seek private education. Um, I think that the community is better <coughs> when in the whole when everybody's we're using those funds that are, are gathered to the community to support the school district. So I, I, I don't support it. I, I do believe it's a personal choice that, that the family should take the financial responsibility to send those their students if they would choose to go to a private education. Thank you. And then Brian? I do support vouchers only under the fact that if the, the private school follows the same policies and procedures as public education. Okay. And then what, and we're starting with Chris, what do you think that the school board should do to ensure that the district is able to attract and retain high quality teaching staff? What more could we do? Well, like I said before, I, I think they're doing a great job to do that. I think as the community grows and we get a little bit more to to offer um, younger professionals that are coming to the community, um, that may be something, but this, the school board really can't do anything about that. They can collaborate with the, the village to, to make good use of public space, but um, I I, I think that they're doing a good job of of, retain, of drawing in talent. So um, I guess I would just say keep on doing what they're doing. Okay. Then Brian? I believe that, that through the hierarchy of administration that it's important that teachers feel that they have a voice and that they are included at the table in decision-making processes. And I think when they feel empowered in that process that, that they feel valued and then that's why they stay. Thank you, and then Stanley. Repeat the question, please. Um, what do you think that the school board should do to ensure that the district is able to attract and retain high quality teaching staff? I think, I think it's very important that we listen to the teachers' voices. I think uh, as a school board member, as a member of the community, I think we need to understand what it's like at the lowest level and the lowest levels in the classroom. So I think if, if, if we voice their concerns and we take care of those, those teachers that are in the classrooms doing the work, I think keeping, the, keeping them in the classrooms and, retain, and bringing new teachers into the district will go hand in hand. If it's a good place to work, people are happy to go to work, people are going to want to come here to work. Thank you. And I asked all three, right? <laughs> I just mm -hmm. want to make sure so um, Brian then we start with you how would you handle receiving a call from an irate parent or employee with a complaint first of all I'd, I'd listen to their concern their complaint their issue um, at the same time I, I have to be very neutral in the fact that I'm not the sole decision maker on the school board that there are seven of us and that um, there's also two sides to every story um, and so that, yes, I, I, I value what you're telling me, um, but that I can't make the final decision, that I have to go back and, and, and I have to work with the board and work with administration and work with whoever else is involved in that other side to ensure that all aspects are laid out there before the final decision is made. Okay, thank you. And then Stanley? I, I would echo Brian. I, I would, you know, obviously we're going to act like professionals and, um, you know, you're, you're just going to, ask probing questions and, and make sure that you have both sides of the story and obviously make no promises but but bring back the complaint to the board so you can talk through it with with the board members to, to make the best decision and, and figure out an outcome and hopefully resolve the issue in a pleasant manner okay, and Chris yeah I would echo what the other two gentlemen have said it just you got to you have to listen to understand their side of it but I would I would I guess take it a step further and have them um, ensure that they've um, spoken directly with either their their teacher that if it's a problem with the student or uh, the leadership staff at their direct school um, and just let them know that as a as a board we that's not necessarily something that we can we can take action on and I individually as a board member can't take action on it it's a collective group that needs to to make decisions on that and that's it's that's typically not something that the board would do but I would again focus them back on on talking directly with the teacher or the the leadership at the individual school okay thank you 
So this is the last of the prepared questions that we have. And so if board members have others, you think about it and we will allow you an opportunity to ask. But this is about technology and we start with Stanley. Um, what is your view of online education, flipped classrooms, one-to-one -one computing initiatives, and other attempts to improve education and innovate through the use of technology? I think, I think it's great. I think it's a necessity to make it globally in this world, but we have to remember, is the computer teaching the student or is the teacher teaching the student? Okay. And then um, Christopher? Um, if had you asked me this question several years ago, I would have been a strong opponent of it. I, I was always a firm believer that you had to learn in a classroom in front of a instructor, but my, my philosophies have changed a lot on that. When I went through grad school, so there were some classes that were, were online, and I thought I would hate them, and I ended up act actually really very much enjoying them just because of the flexibility they offer. Um, so I think it is important that, like Stan said, that, that it is a it is a, a global market now. I, I participate in meetings with people from across the country every day, so it's an important skill to have to know that you're not going to be sitting in front of with a bunch of students in front of a teacher learning throughout your life, that there are going to be other opportunities for you to learn, and that, that those are very valuable opportunities, and you're able to get a whole bunch of different perspectives that you normally wouldn't get just sitting in front of a classroom. So um, I would embrace the technology. Um, I, it's here to stay, so it's, it's, it's how the world is moving. Um, so I think as a, as, a, as a district, we should embrace that as well. And then Brian. Um, I do believe that using technology and learning is, is key to the future. Um, I also believe that, that there are aspects of it that we have to then really focus on, which is professional development to make sure that the staff is using the programs correctly. Um, in, in the same sense, setting up the correct expectations for students. We know that students currently are going on to post-secondary education and having blended classrooms. And so what can we do at the high school level, at the middle school level, at the elementary level, just to start to prepare them and to integrate technology strands or standards within the learning to make sure that they're ready and prepared for moving on. Thank you. So then I will ask if board members have any questions that they would like to, we'll just go down and Barb, if you have any questions. Um, no, you're shaking your head. No, no I don't. I have lots of notes. No, it's, I know. Great <laughs> answers. Okay. So. Tom, do you have any questions? Yeah, I got some questions. Um, I'll just ask and then you'll tell me who, you say who to answer, right? Yes, this, this one would start with Chris. Okay. Right. Um, as a board member, your job is to look 5, 10, 20 years down the road. That's your job. Is that the day-to-day -day stuff is taken care of here? Um, Holman's growing exponentially. You see it anywhere, everywhere around here, and it partially as related to this school system. It's popular. It's it's doing well. Um, as a board member, the future's up for grabs with education. I don't mind school choice myself. My kids did internet school and they did Holman, and it worked out really great for them. By the year 2025, the voucher restrictions are going to be gone. There's not going to be any more voucher restrictions. What are your plans to handle millennials who are going to be voting for you and voting for this board down the road? Millennials like change. They like options. Anywhere you look, there's options. It's time you want to ask your question. Sorry. <laughs> so what is your, um, sorry, thank you, sorry. Um, what are your what are your thoughts on how would you handle that? I mean, do you like? I know you. I, I got your school choice of voucher answers. That's fine. But what are you, what are, what are some solutions you're going to have to fight the the more the competitive market we have? She teaches in a year round school. She loves it. Okay, I, so let's so that's, ask the question. Go, go, go give me a, an answer. I have two questions, but I'll ask another one later. So okay. go ahead. I'm just saying, the market, the education market is going to increase. There's going to be more and more competition. I think we do a really good job with students. How are you, what are some of your solutions or what are your thoughts on us down 10, 20 years down the road when we compete for education dollars? I think I, I, even if you're competing for dollars in the market, you have to provide the best product. So I, I think if the, if the school district is, is still providing the great opportunities that they do now and future opportunities that are out there for the students, I think that's that's a selling point, I guess, for the school to have that as opposed to the other options that are available. Um, I think it, some of it goes back to the old-fashioned, hey, my friends go to that school, so I'm going to go to that school too. Um, I hope we don't 
go become an internet only community. I, I, I try to limit my children's you know involvement in the online world and say, hey, go play with the neighbor kids because <laughs> they're real kids. Um, <laughs> uh, and that's important. That's how I, I'm sure all three of us grew up doing that is, is getting out and not having the, the, the screen time that we do. But I, I guess to, to, to answer your question, I would say just in terms of a pure market standpoint, just provide a better product and that is I, th I think very easy for a really good school um, district to do. I know it's just yeah. pretty big. So hey, Brian? I think one aspect we would have to do is, is go to the stakeholders within the community to say what do you expect from the district because if they can give us some insight into what they expect we can at least react that way. Um, I do believe that there will always be a community school and it's a question then of, of what can we do to try to set ourselves apart from the neighboring districts that are going to try to pull students away from us. Um, and, that, and in that case, we have to go right to the community to say, what could we do better? What, what are, where are we lacking that, that? Why are you sending your kids to the neighboring districts? That'll then change their opinion to get them to come here. Thank you. And then Stanley? Um, as, as a school board, we just we got to work harder. We got to do our research. We got to find out the whys. Why are people? Why are our numbers dropping at home in high school? Why are they going elsewhere for education? I think some things to combat that is obviously to stay, you know, relevant with technology. I think co-curricular activities is huge. I think great. I think great sport teams and great competition um, is definitely good for any community. And I think a lot of people truly do look at that as, as sometimes reasons why to come to the community on top of the great great education so we just we ourselves can't be traditional we we have to keep moving forward if we're moving this district forward the board members need to be constantly thinking 5 10 20 years down the road as well okay thank you Tom do you have any more questions one more question okay um, please ask it one thing you'll get if you get to be a board member is this magazine Really cool. I really like this book. This really magazine. I can think of almost every ver every every copy I've gotten. Um, <clears throat> one was an article at the beginning I thought was really interesting and it talked about music education and how it develops math skills, which my kids were both first chair clarinet and saxophone in Holman. And then there was a there's a comment here at the end. It talks about this this um, this book by Daniel Pink, the the science the scientific secrets of perfect timing and. One of it, he gives different things to consider for education. The last one he states, he says, as a priority, starting high school the day later. That's, it's a giant pain, but it's the right thing to do. As a school board member, you'll be subject to closed session meetings of kids that make bad decisions. I think our district does a great job trying to deal with that. Later start times, I think, would help. Are you in favor of later start times for the schools? Whoever answers. Um, we start with Brian. <laughs> All right. If if we are a district that looks at research, then then the answer clearly is yes. But we also have to look at the different factors of busing and parental needs and and child care. And and I, I, I believe that's why we're in the current situation where we, we don't start the high school um, later and, and start the elementary because really the research shows that it needs to be flipped. If we had support from the community and all the stars aligned, we do that. I, I truly believe that as a board, it would be a no-brainer. We would just go ahead and move in that direction. Okay, and then Stanley. I would say yes. I, I support. I'm a big. I'm a firm believer in change when, when it's necessary, when it makes sense. So I would definitely, you know, obviously us doing our research, talking. Um, I definitely, you know, we can't be afraid of change because everything is changing outside these doors at a dramatic at a dramatic rate daily and if and if that can help us achieve our overall all, our overall vision and better the students and, and lower disciplinary actions then why wouldn't we and then Chris I would say I, it depends on the, what the data su supports um, that's what I do on a daily basis is I use data to make decisions and they're important decisions so um, I guess I would not be opposed to it you make a very good point as a, as a father of two young kids that there are definitely outside influences that impact when school starts and that's an important for families to consider that so and the school board to consider that and the district as a whole to consider that so um, I guess I would support that but we'd have to the, the decision would have to be made on data and if that is what's best truly for the district okay Thank you. then Anita 
Um, I just have a couple of questions. So, so far tonight in the um, answers, I've heard referendums referred to a couple of times because they're so common in the state now, just to make up for the lack of funding that we get from the state. Do you believe that school funding is adequate? And if you don't believe that, should referendums always be the answer? Or should we look for increased funding from the state to support our schools rather than going to the taxpayers every, whenever we need something for a referendum? So we'll start with Stanley. I think we always pressure the state first and then we take our community taxpayers' money. I think we, we just need to we, we just need to become, we need to maybe better understand how we can get more funding through the state. We need to do more research. We need to talk to our peer districts. We, we need to be able to communicate and, and just see and just make sure everybody is on, the, is on the same lines and just, you know, continue to explore different avenues for those financial needs. Christopher? Chris. I believe that there's a healthy balance there. I mean, uh, all politics and all the, all this is very local. So it, it, to ask the state to support all the, the uh, initiatives that the school district has, I, I, I think is a heavy lift. But I, I, I think there can be some more uh, support that comes from the state level. But um, I think ultimately that the school board will be, and the district will be at the mercy of the, of the taxpayers that, that they're directly serving. So I, I, I I think there's a healthy mix that's there. Um, you can ask the state for more, but ultimately it's the people that are uh, living in the community that are, are, are going to be the funding these initiatives. So. And then Brian? I don't believe that schools are adequately funded, and I believe that it should start at the state level to adequately fund them, um, given that many of the policies and, and initiatives come from the state, that they should adequately fund those initiatives and policies. Um, and that I don't believe that we should always have to go to the taxpayer um, to constantly ask them for referendum after referendum, because eventually they're going to say no. They'll get fatigued. Okay. Anita? Um, okay. My other question, and I, I might have another one. I'm, I'm just trying to put it in my head. But um, when you get on the school board, usually we, we run for school board because we have a loved one or a child or someone in the district that we, we want to make sure that they get the very best education they can what well, was really hard for me and I know I'm, this is I'm gonna get to a question this is just a short <laughs> statement to realize when I got on that I was not just representing my own two daughters I was representing all these kids and it was kind of a slap in the face not, I mean it was a wake-up because I was like oh my gosh everything I do impacts thousands of kids not just mine so I'm just wondering if you really if if you get appointed to the seat or chosen for the seat, can you be impartial? And you will have to make decisions that affect your own kids or family members in a negative way. You have to look at the big picture and I, I really wanna truly know, I don't doubt it, but I would just like to hear from each of you if you could do this or not, to look past just your own immediate needs and do what, what's best for the greater good of the Pullman school community. And so Chris, we start with you on this one. I, I truly feel I could. Um, I, I, I'm in this for the, the district as a whole, and it's not just my kid. I think I put that in my, in my application that I, I'm not in this to better my kids. I'm not, I don't have an agenda. I'm not accusing anyone. No, no, I completely understand. No, no, I completely understand that, but I'm just reiterating what I had, had, had stated in my application that it, I, it's, you have to truly look at the district as a whole. And in my, two, my two kids are just two little pieces in that district and and we have to consider every the needs of every student and it's not just it's just not just my kids it's all the students that are out there because there's kids that have more needs than my my kids do that there's kids that don't have more needs than mine do but as a whole we have to consider all the students and all of their needs when we're providing their education thank you and Brian <coughs> um, yeah I can do this um, I do it 180 days out of the year knowing that when I walk in the classroom that even though we always say they're my kids, I mean, we're doing what's best for all students. Um, I think what I want to say is at the end of the day that even though we may not see things from the same perspective, um, that we are making the best decision for, this, for all the students. And that when a parent or even when I go home to my wife and, and I share, well, this was the decision that we made, that it is backed up with sound reasoning and data and, and research and that it wasn't just, well, that's just how I felt. That, that it, there really is a, a definite reason of, of how we approached it, how we got to that conclusion. Um, 
and and that's that's how I'll be able to sleep better at night. Okay, and then Stanley. Uh, I would say absolutely. For most of my adult life, I've been the speaking or the focal point for the the men and women that served behind me, and not always did things go our way, but we understood the overarching mission and the vision of what we were trying to accomplish. So, I 100% understand what you know the things you have to put aside to be on the board because it is it's about the community of home and, and the education for the students in home and then in state we started with Stanley or I'm sorry with Chris so we'll start with Brian on this next question Anita did you have another one last one well it, it kind of you kind of asked about vouchers before I guess I just wanted clarification so the way the state um, funds vouchers now the, the voucher schools are not on a level playing field with public schools they get they get funding but they don't have to meet the same requirements they don't have to follow the same rules as it stands right now in that unlevel playing field do you support vouchers can we start with Brian no okay yeah and one word answer is great <laughs> then Stanley as I said earlier yes and then Chris I'm not okay thank you and then Gary has joined us. Gary, um, is, do you have any questions? We asked. Well, if I ask some questions, I'd probably be redundant on ones you already asked. Okay. Just, is there just, anything since you came a little late? Is there anything they you would like to hear from them again? If if it's redundant, it's okay. We've got a couple minutes. Is there any particular maybe their philosophy or something that might help you? And or no, you read their letters. Their yeah. No, I think. I think I'll just listen if that's okay. okay. I don't wanna, I don't well, wanna, we're pretty much wrapping I don't up. Interfere, yeah. yeah, we're pretty much wrapping up. So, um, I don't have any questions. Barb, did anything come to you since we started? So I think that is um, the conclusion of the Q and A. Did you have anything that maybe, as a result of any of the questions we asked, or something you may have wanted to add or forgot that you would like to just add at the end? A concluding statement or anything like that you certainly would be welcome to or no one is jumping at it but so I think we'll just pass on that then but yeah if I know sometimes it's like oh I wanted to say this so <laughs> so then I am going to pull out my agenda because I have many sheets so at this time then it is um, the board vote the board selection policy and so we have your ballots if you want to fill out your ballot and then um is there a basket to put it in so yes. that are you collecting sure okay i have got to tell you any one of you would do an exceptional job. I know it. So it's this is hard. It does make me hopeful for our future because we have yes. board elections coming forward, always looking for folks. To, and that's what I'm answer. excited about too, because I hope that whoever doesn't get the position that you would continue pursuing um, that opportunity too because we always need good people we do and it really starts at the committee level yeah. um, where things are done at the committee level and it works its way up so, so we have a two one one which solidifies your comments okay so you get to vote again okay okay so if you, two one one votes so you we have, have, have two for, for one, one candidate, candidate and one and one okay okay so That does solidify the. Mm -hmm. I don't see how this run goes. I might be here all night. <laughs> she wasn't joking. She gave me another stack in case we vote more than three times. So I just to get oh, back. good. A two, one, one. Okay. Need more information. I, I 
I don't think it calls for us to announce who the votes are. Do we? It doesn't say we can't. It doesn't say we can. No. Um, it was different. Two one one. Oh, first oh. interesting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh. That helps it all. Okay, <laughs> that does. <clears throat> hey, we flip a coin. <clears throat> We should have you guys vote too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Wayne's like, no. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Two, one, one. I can't. Different? Different need, than the last time. We need. Uh, so. Why don't we do one more and then I think we'll announce what the two, who had two, who had one, who had one. But okay. we'll do one more vote. I'm going to take okay. Rebecca's. Oh, Her he's. Duties. Thank you. Huh? So one more vote. And this time, it won't, we won't announce who voted for yeah, whom, first, second, but third. who has two, who has one, and one. We'll announce right. that this time. Okay. <clears throat> This is the most votes we've ever done with this. <laughs> okay. Although I do remember once in the, not the late 90s, I think it was the early 2000s. I, I'm old. I've been on here a long time. So that's why that encourages me. Maybe this next Oh, again, eh? Oh. So 2 one, one again? Yeah, oh, you guys. Guys, you're all pig headed, aren't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you so we announce who has the two, who has the one, and who has the other one. Okay, uh, Brian Wolpat has two, and uh, Chris Law has one, and Stan Grant has one for this round. For this round, yep. okay. Vote again. Okay. Yeah, Rebecca Barb has a couple here. I'll just pass that down. Mm -hmm. If you want to give, oh, Barb might need another. Bag. Barb might need another. Yeah. You want a mini? Yeah, we're all out. Go to board policy because we still have two on one. Same, and same outcome. Yeah, so continue to vote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the jury shall be sequestered. <laughs> Order pizza, yeah. <laughs> sure. Yes. I don't know that I'd feel comfortable.
I marked my tomorrow off, so I, I think this might happen. <laughs> Coming to count or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there isn't. I looked before we came. So we modified our our policy last year, and we did not change anything about ties or not ties if we don't have enough. So now we may need to to do that in the future. But it was something that came up because we had a re this situation a couple years ago, and. Um, we ended up with not enough. We had to go, I think, two ballots or three ballots, and then people changed. Um, but we didn't make any changes that you just continued to vote until mm -hmm. the person is successful. Hmm. Okay, we do have a 3 1 vote, and Brian Wolpat has the three votes. So. so, Brian would be the successful candidate then. So. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. But again, thank you so much yes. because all of you would be awesome um, yeah, board members. So, because I'm like, I have a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this is tougher than any candidate form that we've ever had. We ask a lot of hard questions. So, that sometimes when you run for office for the school board, you have to do that. But you guys all did really well in this. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, my heart is that having a Holman graduate is so fun to have that. And then people who have recently moved, you know, into the district to see the quality. And then Brian having taught here and then having a, you know, family and an educator in the district. It's just so rewarding to see that and I hope you don't go away with hard feelings I hope there mm -hmm. aren't any hard feelings it's very I difficult I, do I hope so I, yeah. really I do. do there aren't enough people that are involved and really want to serve and you clearly all want to serve and have and all so you know in your answers there is sometimes you don't have all of the background and so it but it's so clear that you have that broad understanding of what it is to be a board member and the willingness to learn and that sort of thing so that is key because a lot of times we have people that come with an agenda and they want to make this change because of a B or C and it's clear that that's not what you're here for so that's why it's so hard but congratulations to Brian and thank you all again for coming out and doing this I hope again that there aren't any hard feelings about and there's it. an election every April so yeah. you yes really yes it. December is when you would apply for it and you don't have to get signatures either that's another thing about Holman is you don't have to go door to door and ask for signatures you just have to file so and, and that application is way easier than the one you did now yes it is yeah <laughs> it's like check and check the box yeah. and decide if you're spending money or not you know so yeah yes. there's yes. not much to it right so so with that we've done the announcement of the appointment if there's no other business to come before the board um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved. Is there a second second okay motion's been made and seconded to adjourn all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed nay motion carries thank you very much we are adjourned <laughs>